Hello and welcome back to Disneyland. Today I'm going to finish the toy box for my Pirates of the Caribbean ride. All I have left to do is the logic and it's not difficult to hook up so I'm going to do all of the logic in one episode. <laughs> but before I start I want to mention two things. First, for those of you who are building this toy box on your own systems, you can find logic diagrams on my blog that will help you out. The link is in the video description, and you may want to reference these diagrams as you follow along. Second, I will be doing the ride for Peter Pan's flight next in this series. So if you're on a console and you do not own the Neverland and second star to the right power disks shown here, you should try to get them. I'll give you alternatives when we get to the build videos, but you really should get these discs if you can because you will appreciate having the Sky Dome, the Peter Pan music, the terrain texture, and the plant customizations for this one. And also, while I'm at it, if uh, you do not have the Small World or Skies of the World power discs, you should look for those too, because we'll be doing Small World after we finish Peter Pan's flight, and you'll need those discs for that. And there really is not a good alternative <laughs> For those particular power discs. If you want to do the Small World ride, you really need those Small World power discs. Alright, so let's dive into the logic for Pirates of the Caribbean. This ride can be divided up into four stages. The first stage is the log ride from the loading area out to the pirate ship. The second stage is the battle with the fort and then sailing the pirate ship over here into port. The third stage is the ground assault on the pirate town and the fort where you're running through the streets and battling the pirates on foot. And then the final stage is the canal boat ride from the end here all the way back to the loading area. And so um, that's basically the flow and that's what we're going to follow as we go along here. Now to save time, I've, I've already done a lot of preliminary work before I started recording. And let me show you all of that first, and then we'll hook up the logic for this one stage at a time. So, starting at the beginning, we have a path. And I'm going to show you the path points for these in a little bit, but this is the first path. We have a button. We have our log Splash Mountain log car from the ground vehicles. I've got a time delayer and a level starter. All right. And then over here inside the tunnel, <laughs> if I can get there, I've got another trigger area and I'll show you the placement of that when we get to this point. I've got another trigger area down here at the exit. And underneath the waterfall we have two sound effect generators and an effects generator. And uh, I'll show you where these are actually. Let's do that now. So this trigger area is not resized at all. It just sits right in here inside the entrance, uh, the exit from the tunnel here. All right. And this one up here is situated like you see here. And feel free to pause this video. I'll try to give you a good look at this from different angles so you can see how to position it. And the position of these is kind of important. All right, and then we've got a locator out here. And never mind these blocks just yet. We'll get to that point. I've also got a trigger area sitting out here on this island, like you see there. All right, and then in town, I've got a trigger area that's covering this whole front of the town here, stretched across here like you can see, in case the characters come in by ground, or maybe a flying character attempts to come in. And I've got another trigger area up here in front of the wall, it only goes down to this height, to the edge of the top of the wall. This one over here, though, goes all the way down to ground level. 
I have an enemy wave generator that is connected to locators as you see here and the last one is positioned around this corner. I have another enemy wave generator here that's connected to these five locators here. So there's two in front of the gate, one between the trees and two on the sidewalk over here. In town we have another enemy wave generator and that is connected to locators that are placed as you see here and another enemy wave generator connected to those two locators one at the top of the slope and two over here. We also have two loot chests positioned like you see there. In the fort we have a trigger area stretched across this part of the fort. Three enemy wave generators connected to locators that are scattered around here. This one is connected to that locator back over there. This one is connected to these locators here. This one is connected to those locators there. I'll review all the settings for those in a bit. And then over here we have another button, a time delayer, our second splash mountain log, and our path that takes us back. Okay, so those are all of the creativity toys that we need. So let's start with stage one. And I'm going to begin by showing you the path points here and where they're positioned. So the first one starts off right here at the base of the ladder, centered in the canal. The next path point you're going to place about here. And you can note the terrain on the sides of the slope there. Note the terrain seams and the plants and stuff that will help you place this. The third point is around the bend here. Fourth point is right here, one nudge back from this terrain scene, right before you get to the curve. The next path point is right here, just past the edge of the drop. That goes to the next one at the bottom of the slope, and this sits right above this locator. Alright, for the next one, you notice I have two spacer blocks here with a gap. So the next path point sits here, straight out from that one and oriented like you see there. And then from here we've got one, two, three, four more of those blocks with another gap. The next path point goes here, it's straight out again from those other two. If you ignore the, the connecting line there. It's straight connection from these guys all the way out. Okay. And then from here we have one, two, three, four with an L. And the next path point sits right there on the end of that. Then off the corner we have two of these and a terrain cube. The next path point sits off the edge of that. And then the last path point sits right here, just inside this trigger area. And you can kind of see how that's positioned with respect to the terrain and the slope there. Okay, so that is the path that takes you to the ship. So we'll come back here, and the first thing we will do is we'll set the properties on the path. Everything is fine under here, but you're going to turn off auto start objects when connected. Okay, and we are going to set the path point options. We're going to set the velocity, the speed modifier for every path point on this path because we need the car, the log, to speed up and slow down. So the first speed modifier we are going to set to 40. like that. Okay. 
and that's the first one. The next property on the next point, you're going to select the, log, uh, the point, open the logic menu, set the multiplier on that to 40. And I'm not going to set all of these, but this shows you how to do it, okay? The next point, you're going to set the modifier for that to 40. And the next point right here before the turn to go to the waterfall, that one you're also going to set to 40. This one, right over the edge of the waterfall, set that to 50. Okay. The point at the bottom of the slope, down here, this path point, you're going to set the speed modifier on that to 300. Because we're going to pick up speed going down that waterfall. This one, you're going to set to 40. So as the player comes off the waterfall and exits that tunnel, it'll slow down to 40. And all the rest of the points in the path, set those to 50. So it's a slight speed up that'll get you around the bend and over to the island. Okay? So those are all the speed modifiers you need to set. And with that, the path is ready to go. So now we'll connect our log car. I can select the silly thing. Here we go. We're going to do a new path connection. We're going to connect that to this path. You'll notice it doesn't jump there automatically, and that's actually good. <laughs> On the properties for the Splash Mountain log, go under Toy Box Path. We're going to set the speed on this to be 200. Orient along the path is going to be true. Leave those set to 0. That one set to 100. These three are 0. Rotation is 0. For the movement style, we'll set this to one way and stop, but it's not really going to listen to that because the final property under here, we're going to turn on the driving physics, all right? And that's our log. And now when we push the button, we're going to start the log, but we want to give the player time to get in the car. So we're going to use a time delayer for that. And we're going to set the properties on this for the delay time of five seconds, okay? So on the button, we will do a new logic connection when pressed. Come over to the time delayer, start the delay. And on the time delayer, a new logic connection when the delay is completed. Come over to our Splash Mountain log, go under Toy Box Path, and we're going to do a reset and play. Okay. And at the same time, on the button, We'll do a new logic connection when pressed, come over to our car, to the log, and under Toy Box Path, do a reset and stop. So the player, when they come back here after the ride, if they want to ride it again, they can come up and push the button. So this will do a reset and stop on the car, which will put it back here from over at the pirate ship, back to this point. Start the time delayer. Five seconds later, that'll go off and start the car moving. And this will follow along the path at the speeds that are specified. Okay, and when we end up over here, and it enters this trigger area, we want to stop the vehicle. So on the trigger area, we'll do a new logic connection when entered by vehicle. We'll come up to our Splash Mountain log. Under Toy Box Path, we'll say Stop. So that will leave it at the island and allow the player to get out on foot. All right, and that's basically it for the first stage, with the exception of the waterfall. And these are just little special things in here 
not really needed, but we're going to use this trigger area to start the uh, the roller coaster screen. <laughs> and this one to do a splash sound. That roller coaster screen is not going to finish before the car enters this trigger area down here. And that's why we have two sound effect generators. So on this one, actually on both of them, we're going to turn off 3D sound at speaker or locator so the player can hear these at full volume no matter where they are. They don't have to be right on top of them. And this, this uh, effect generator, we're going to connect that up to the locator that's over here. We're going to play a uh, splash visual effect. We'll set that to be our effects location. So on the top trigger area here, we'll do a new logic connection when entered by vehicle. We're going to come down to our first sound generator and under the vocal category scroll down to the fun screen that's the sound we're going to play okay for the second trigger area down here at the bottom we're going to do a new logic connection when entered by vehicle we'll come over to our second sound generator and we can't go to the other one because that'll cut off the screen so that's why we have the second one here and under the general category, we're going to go down to the splash sound. And we may have to go down a little ways to get to that. There it is. Splash. And then we want to play our visual effect. So on the trigger area, new logic connection when entered by vehicle. Now, if you just come in here and do play once, you are not going to find the water category. That only shows up under play looped for some weird reason. So we have to play looped, and then we can see the water category. We're going to do splashing water, and we don't want that to play indefinitely. So we're going to come back over to our trigger area, do a new logic connection when exited by the vehicle. We'll come back over to our visual effects generator and stop looping the effects. So we'll just get the splash when the player hits the bottom here. All right, and that is it for the first stage of the ride. And that's probably the bulk of the logic <laughs> between that and the running ground battles. So at this stage, you can go ahead and move this toy over here behind the buildings and get it out of the way. Leave the level starter for the moment. We're going to come back to that. And you can go ahead and take out all of these spacer blocks here for this first path. Okay. Now, stage two is the battle with the fort. And I've placed some green armored orbs over here. And you find these in the uh, gameplay toys drawer. Let me pick one up. It's the green armored orb. Be sure to use that one so that it's something you can destroy with the cannons from the ship. Do not use this one because that won't work. Okay, and you can place these wherever you want, but I placed one up here by the tower. I placed a few of these along the wall over here. And you can kind of see how they're positioned. And I only did uh, six of them. I thought that was sufficient. Oh, we also have a collectible tracker that we've placed here. Let's go ahead and configure that while we're right here. The collectible type, we're going to set this to be the green armored orb. And we'll leave show on radar off because you don't really need to see them on the radar. They're right there in plain view. All right, for the path for the ship, we've got another spacer block that's right here off of this terrain piece. And the first path point goes right there on the end of that. Uh, I've also got some additional blocks over here. 
We've placed these two blocks here for the last point. This one is right off the end of this beach piece with another terrain cube off of there. We had left this piece here before, so you're going to add spacer blocks one, two, three, four, five, six with a little gap, and then another spacer block turned that way. Okay? So the first path point, as I said, you're going to drop this one little nudge off the corner of that terrain cube. So that's where your first path goes. When it puts you in point mode, you're going to put the next one out here in about a terrain block width over this way, the three block long, the three cube long block. And this is lined up over there like you see. And this one doesn't really matter as long as you get it in the ballpark. This one is right off the center of that block, one nudge. The next one is one nudge off the corner of that block. And then we are right here on the end of this block. Okay, so there's the how you draw the path for the ship. And then you can go ahead and take these blocks out as well. You can take all of these out. And all of those and all of those. As well as the one we left in here from last time. You can take that out as well. I won't do that because you can do that yourself. Alright, so then we come over to our ship. And this is out of the set pieces drawer. Let me pick that up. That is the pirate ship with cannons. Okay. So on this ship, you're going to go to the logic menu for it, do a new path connection. And whoops, before we do that, let me cancel out of that. We need to set the path properties here. So on the path properties, everything under here is fine, but we're going to turn off auto start objects when connected. Okay. And I'm just double checking something here. Yeah. All right. Okay, so now that auto start has been turned off, now we can come back to our ship, do a new path connection, connect that up with this path. And again, the placement of this is very important, which is why I had the spacer blocks in there because you, want, you don't want this thing overlapping this block, so it's got to be far enough out, and you want that rope lined up at a point where the player can grab it. All right, on the properties for the ship, under Toy Box Path, we're going to orient along the path, and you notice it made the ship change there. We'll fix that in a second. Leave these the way they are. For rotation, we're going to set this to 90. And then movement style will be one way and stop. Okay. So the player boards the ship. They're going to use the cannons to shoot these orbs. And once all the orbs are done, the next part of stage two, which is moving the pirate ship, will be kicked off by the collectible tracker. So the collectible tracker will do a new logic connection when the final collectible is collected. We'll come over to our pirate ship, and under the toy box path, we're going to start the ship moving. All right. And that'll bring it over here. And once it reaches the end of the point, the uh, one way and stop property we set on the ship will cause the ship to stop at this point. So that's really good. And that is it for stage two. <laughs> the logic for that is very, very simple. Okay, stage three is the running battle through town. So we want to generate the first enemies before we get to that dock. 
And so off of this point back here, we're going to do that. So on the logic menu for this point, we'll do a new logic connection. When the point is reached by the object on the path, we're going to come over to the first enemy wave generator over here and generate the wave. And this, as I said, is connected up to these locators as I showed you earlier. The uh, wave is configured with three clam pirates and two driftwood pirates. And the properties on all of the enemy wave generators are the same. Uh, basically use the defaults, just take the generation delay to zero. So I'm not going to show you the properties for all of the enemy wave generators. They're identical to this. Alright, so when the pirate ship reaches that point on the path, we generate the first enemies and they'll be here wandering around when the ship docks. And I want them here earlier because the player might decide to jump off the ship onto the beach over here. And if they do that, then uh, those enemies will already be present. Now once they jump off the ship and run through this trigger area, we're going to generate the next set of enemies, which are right in front of the town. So on this trigger area, we'll do a new logic connection when entered by player any. We'll come over to this enemy wave generator and generate that wave. And this wave is configured with two clam pirates, two driftwood pirates, and one turtle. Again, the properties are the same as the other one I showed you. And this one again is connected up to those locators there. And then on this wave generator, we want to do a new logic connection. When the wave is generated, we want to disable this trigger area, so we only do this one time. So we'll deactivate the trigger area. All right, coming through this trigger area, we'll kick off the next enemy wave generator. So a new logic connection when entered by player any that will come over to this enemy wave generator generate that wave and again this one is connected up to the locators that you see there <laughs> trying to give you a good view of them but there's one on the balcony straight ahead two on the ground there two on the ground over there and on this enemy wave generator New logic connection when the wave is generated. We'll disable this trigger area. And again, this wave generator properties are the same. The wave is configured with two driftwoods, one clam, two turtles this time. So we're getting a little bit tougher as we get into town. And I connected the locators such that this locator is last, as well as this one. So that when the order of my wave is in there, the turtles will end up at those two spots. Okay. New logic connection on this one. When that wave is defeated, then we want to generate the next wave. And this one is connected to the locators that you see there, as we showed earlier. The wave on this one is set up with two driftwoods, two turtles, and one Maccus, the hammerhead guy. The two driftwoods will end up here, because I connected those first. The turtles will end up here and here, because I connected those locators next. And Maccus will end up at this one. And then if the player is a flying character and they decide to skip the town <clears throat> and come up here, we'll use this trigger area to kick off that enemy wave generator as well. So when entered by player, any, <coughs> excuse me, we'll generate this wave. And on this uh, enemy wave generator, new logic connection, when that wave is generated, Go ahead and disable this trigger area, so we only do that once. And that is it for the enemies in town. 
Now the loot chests, um, I'm using these to put healing capsules in here so the player doesn't have to, uh, yeah, we don't have to have these out directly in the toy box heating up memory. So just configure the loot on each of these. The default properties are fine. And they're set up that way. Okay, and then for the battle in the fort, we're going to do a new logic connection on this trigger area when entered by player Annie. We're going to come to each of these enemy wave generators and generate the wave. connection when entered by player any generate that wave new logic connection when entered by player any generate that wave So this first wave, as I mentioned earlier, is connected to those locators and the wave is configured with two turtles and three driftwoods. The second one, connected to those locators, the wave on this one is configured with three Macus, Macus, and two turtles. And the last one, one rebuker from the Force Awakens playset. He's a good tough guy. He goes here. Okay. And that is it for stage three. So that's pretty straightforward. Oh, and we want to make sure we only do this once. So new logic connection on the first one here when that wave is generated deactivate this trigger area. All right, and then for stage four, that's just the canal ride back to town. So on this one, we have our first path point we've placed here. And these all follow and kind of look at the terrain there and the terrain scene and see where each of these points are placed. And I've got a gap in there. I forgot to add some terrain blocks when I did the build. So let me show you what to do there after I show you the path points here. This next one is right on that terrain seam. Next one is one nudge past that terrain seam. This one's right on that seam. This one's right on that seam. And this one is as close as I can get to that starting path point there. And we've also got a trigger area underneath this uh, little roof area there. Okay, so once again, I've already set the properties under here. Just turn off auto start objects when connected. Then we come over to our car, do a new path connection, connect that to the path, and set the properties on this under toy box path. We want to orient along the path. Leave those set the way they are. Under movement style, this will be one way and stop, even though it really isn't going to use that. Because at the bottom, we're going to turn on use driving physics.
And once again, we're going to use a time delayer to give the player time to get into the car. So we'll set the delay time to five seconds. So when the player presses the button, new logic connection when pressed. Start the delay on the time delayer, new logic connection when the delay is completed. Come over to the car, toy box path, do a reset and play. And in case the player decides they want to ride this again, we have this one do a reset and stop on this car. We should do that on the other one as well. This will put the car back at the start over there. So new logic connection when pressed. This will put the car over here at the start. So we're going to come to the splash mountain log to the car. Under toy box path, do a reset and stop. Okay. And then once they reach the trigger area over here near the end, We'll do a new logic connection when entered by vehicle. We'll come over to our vehicle over here. Under toy box path, tell it to stop. So that'll stop it at the end of the path and the player can get out. Okay, and that is it for stage four. <laughs> That's pretty straightforward. Now, a few things that we need to do to clean up. I have noticed sometimes when I lo load the toy box that the Splash Mountain cars are nowhere to be found. <laughs> I don't know where they end up. Um, they're not here at the start. They're not over at their ending point. And so that's why we have the level starter in here. And so on the level starter, we're going to do a new logic connection on Catalyze. We're going to do a reset and stop on each of the Splash Mountain logs, just to make sure they are where they are supposed to be. On Catalyze, come over to this one and do the same thing. So that the ride is set up right away the way it needs to be when you come into the toy box. Okay, so the player goes through the ride. They end up back over here, and let's say they decide they want to ride it again. We need to do some resetting on certain things. So this button here needs to reset everything in the ride. So the first thing we're going to do with this is a new logic connection. When pressed, we've already reset the cars. We need to reset the pirate ship, put that back where it needs to go. So under the toy box path for that, we'll do a reset and stop. We need to put all of our collectibles back at the fort. So new logic connection when pressed. We're going to come over to the collectibles. And do a reset. Make that exact same connection from the button to each of these other five collectibles. So that'll put them back. On the button. New logic connection. When pressed, we need to reset the collectible tracker. So we come over here and do that. And we also need to turn on all of those trigger areas we deactivated. So new logic connection on the button. Come over to each of these four trigger areas out here and activate. So make that same connection for these other three. And um, 
The other thing you should do as well, just in case there's any enemies remaining out there, is you want to do a new logic connection when pressed. You want to come over to every one of the enemy wave generators and defeat those waves. Make that same connection for all of the enemy wave generators. All right. And then when you're done, you can move all of these creativa toys. You can stash them over here behind these buildings. Um, you can stash them like over for the time delayer that's over here. You can stash that back here out of the way. Find places to put it out of the way. Don't put them below the terrain because when you're on the pirate ship or you're in the log ride, you can see underneath that terrain, so you don't want to move them under the terrain. You want to hide those uh, elsewhere. Okay, so these gaps over here, if you come to the terrain drawer, oops, faster to go the other way, just grab a couple of these blocks, style them for the buried treasures theme, and drop one there, drop one there. That'll plug that gap. And the last thing we need is the way to get back to frontier land. And for that we need a toy box door. And we'll find that under the gameplay toys. And we are almost done. We place that there like that. We go into the properties. Under the destination, link an existing toy box, Frontier Land. And the destination locator tag, which we set back in episode 60, was 4. So set this to 4. And you can leave that on. That'll take the players back to Frontierland at the exit for the ride. And I think that is everything. And that is it for Pirates of the Caribbean. Next time we'll return to Fantasyland and I'll take you on a tour of Peter Pan's flight. Until then I want to thank you for watching and I hope you're still enjoying this series. If so, leave a comment before you go to let me know I haven't been getting very many comments lately on my videos, so if you're still with me and you're still watching, I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget there are logic diagrams that I've put together for you on my blog. Again, the link is in the video description. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, just click my photo in the lower right corner of this video. Have a great day!